Oh boy! What is up, everybody? JT Dangerously here once again, and I am back for my Week 11 NFL predictions. Now, of course, Week Week 10 just ended with the New York Giants beating the Cincinnati Bengals. So, my record now, finishing up Week 10, is 10 and 4. So, another winning week. This is the fourth consecutive week we've had a winning record. The last l losing record we've had was Week 6, so it's four straight. Four straight winning weeks, so let's try to make it five this week. Of course, before I before I forget, I want to thank everybody who did watch my Week 10 predictions. We got the uh, that video got the most views on my channel since I've been doing this, most likes since I've been doing this, 525 views. What can I say? I'm really happy. I'm really thankful for you guys for seeing my video. Of course, liking it, 10 likes. One dislike, it's usual with my videos, one dislike, that's all good. Six comments, a lot of great support, especially from a guy, of course, who had a Odell Beckham Jr. profile pic, so I want to thank him personally for the, for telling me to keep up the good work, and I, and I will do that. But again, I want to thank everybody who did watch it, and let's continue this, let's continue this view, like, Every week, every week I've been doing this, they've been up in the in the hundreds. So let's keep this going with this week eleven picks. Now, of course, I want to I want to uh, welcome new subscribers to the channel. Of course, I am JT Dangerously. Um, welcome to the Dangerous Alliance, of course. So again, I want to thank everybody who did watch my week ten predictions, and let's keep this going into week eleven. Now, of course, we're going to start off with the buys. There's four buys this week. So again, if Fantasy reminder, if you have players on these teams, make sure you switch them up before this week because I know we're a couple weeks away from uh, fantasy playoffs, so you want to have you want to you want to have these you want to have all your players in the lineup going into the playoffs. So of course the buys are the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons, 15 points, really the highest scoring offense that scores 15 points. But I digress. The Denver Broncos, which should have lost, but controversy goes into controversy creates cash and that's what Denver did of course the Atlanta Falcons the Denver Broncos the New York Jets you can't get any worse can you Jets and of course the San Diego Chargers so if you have any of those if you have any players from any of those four teams of course I'll repeat it again the Atlanta Falcons the Denver Broncos the New York Jets and the San Diego Chargers are on a bye this week. So if you have any players on any of those four teams, make sure you switch them up. So let's get right into these picks. Starting with the Thursday night matchup, of course, in the NFC South, the New Orleans Saints heading to Charlotte to play the Carolina Panthers. Now, now of course, the New Orleans Saints did lose to Denver Broncos on a blocked, punt, a blocked field goal and a return touchdown to Denver, of course. And Carolina did lose blowing a 17-3 lead against the Kansas City Chiefs and kind of just said, well, they're done. They're not in the playoffs. They're not going to be in the playoff contention. Cam Newton can dab all he wants, but they're, this season has been a disaster for Carolina. Now, of course, um, New Orleans had that win. New Orleans had that win against Denver if it wasn't for that blocked field goal and a return back, which he stepped out of bounds, but the referees didn't have conclusive evidence he stepped out of bounds like this is a this is a toss-up match and I did uh, this was a definitely a toss-up match so I'm gonna take the Carolina Panthers to win this because it's like two teams I'm not caring about in the NFC in the NFC South so I'm gonna take the Carolina Panthers to beat the New Orleans Saints now the Sunday slate that's going against the 30th annual Survivor Series uh, before I get into the Sunday slate, um, comment below if you want to see my predictions for that, and of course take over, uh, take over Toronto. Um, I'm, I don't know if I should, but please comment below if you're interested in listening to my uh, predictions on the NXT Takeover Brooklyn Saturday and Survivor Series on Sunday. So let me know in the comments. But let's get. Uh, but of course the Sunday slate, 10 a.m. starts, 1 p.m. starts. Starting with the first match, the Buffalo Bills heading to Cincinnati to play the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, of course, Buffalo just came off of a bye. They're rested, of course. They'll have all their players. Shady McCoy will be. Uh, Shady McCoy is back after last week, uh, a few weeks ago, that he went off on Seattle, but still lost. But 
Keep an eye on him. Now you have the Cincinnati Bengals who did lose to the Giants tonight on Monday Night Football. So they're on a losing streak. It's not looking good for Cincinnati. I mean, so honestly, I am going to take the Buffalo Bills to win this matchup. Uh, just because it makes a little bit more sense that Buffalo needs to win more than Cincinnati because Cincinnati is not as not great this season. So I'm going to take Buffalo over Cincinnati. Now the next matchup. The Pittsburgh Steelers heading to Cleveland to play the winless Cleveland Browns. Now, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers did lose to the Cowboys Sunday, which was maybe the greatest football game I've seen in a long time. Two great teams. Ben Roethlisberger woke up after last week's terrible, terrible game against the Ravens. They must have watched my video about them being on the list, so they finally backed. Uh, they finally stepped up. Big Ben did work. Le'Veon Bell did work. Antonio Brown did work. The three Bs of the Steelers: Ben, Brown, Bell. They all looked good, but of course they did lose in the last last minute of the game. And then you have the Cleveland and the Browns, who did lose on Thursday Night Football to the Baltimore Ravens. They're winless. What can you say? This is going to be an obvious pick. I'm taking the Pittsburgh Steelers to beat the Cleveland Browns. Of course, it's an AFC North matchup. Pittsburgh definitely, they can, they can go biblical in Cleveland, honestly. But Cleveland, I think they're just wanting the draft pick. They want the number one pick, so let them have the number And I was, I was hearing something that they want a parade for being 0-16. Well, if you if you already won a championship, what's the point of winning? If see, Cleveland's already won a championship, which is the Cleveland Cavaliers, what's the point of winning anymore? Cleveland already has their championship. Cleveland the Cleveland already has their championship. No point in winning anymore. So I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers to beat the Cleveland Browns. Now the next match, the Baltimore Ravens heading to Jerry Land to play the Dallas Cowboys. Now, of course, Baltimore did Baltimore did win on Thursday Night Football pretty decisively against Cleveland. Not a bad game. Everybody did their work. Everybody did their work, and this is, of course, they're in the AFC North match, uh, AFC North with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think they are in, I think they're in second place if I'm, because the Steelers won, and Baltimore did not play, Cincinnati played, so I would think Pittsburgh is first in the AFC North. Then you have the Dallas Cowboys. What can you say about the Dallas Cowboys that I've already I haven't already said in my predictions since week one? Let me just say this right now. This is a personal message to every team that plays Dallas this season. Like the rest of the season going forward into the playoffs. I dare anybody, whoever they're playing this all the way up to week 17, if anybody can stop Zeke the Freak from getting 200 yards. I'm going to say this. If you can stop him, if you can keep him if you can keep him from if you can keep him at 90. If you can keep him at 90. Rushing, 90 receiving. If you keep him under 90, I will pick you every week. That's that's against of course, that's for every team, including my even including my Patriots and my Seahawks. So this is a this is a this is a this is an offer for any football team that plays the Cowboys next. If you can stop Zeke the Freak, if you can stop Zeke the Freak from getting 100 yards, receiving and rushing, then I will pick you these couple weeks. So that's a that's a that's a complete offer for teams because what does Zeke the Freak do? 230 yards total, 116 passing. A passing yards, 114 rushing, three touchdowns. Zeke the freak is his name says it all. He's a freak, and right now he looks like he's gonna break Dickerson's record. Dak Prescott, let me just say this right now. Even though Tony Romo is back, Tony Romo, you're sitting your ass on the bench forever. So I'm just saying that right now. Dak Prescott is the undisputed starter of the Dallas Cowboys. He proved it. He did it all. He's done something since what? Since the 70s, they've never been 8-1 and one with a rookie quarterback. And Dak Prescott is showing that he is the starter. Romo is on the shitty on the bench, and he'll stay there for the rest of the season. There's not going to even be a debate anymore. He's be, he. They're 8-1. They're first in the NFC. 
What else can you say? Dallas is the best team in the NFC. No offense to Seattle. No offense to Detroit. No offense to the New England Patriots. But right in the Oakland Raiders. No offense. Dallas Cowboys have the best team. Best running game. Best great quarterback. Wide receivers, tight ends, all that. In this matchup, of course, I'm going to take the Dallas Cowboys. Because they're on a roll. I have only missed one pick with the Cowboys this season. So... Why should I? Why should I stop now? So I'm going to take the Dallas Cowboys to beat the ba- uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Now the next matchup: the Jacksonville Jaguars heading to Ford Field to play the Detroit Lions. Now, of course, Jacksonville did lose to the uh, the Houston Texans. Of course, Jacksonville Jaguars. You you can't get any worse than them. And then you have can't get any worse than them. And then you have the Detroit Lions, who are in first place because of the two. Teams and I won't. And when we get to them, I will say something about them. That now the Detroit Lions are in first place. They have been the hottest team in the NFC North. That is for sure. Everybody in that division is not great this season. That that's that's saying it obvious. Matthew Stafford is doing work. The Golden Tate's doing work. Everybody's doing work for the Detroit Lions, and they're at home. They're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, which is like a must-win. So, honestly, I am going to take the Detroit Lions to win this matchup. Kind of a blowout. So, Detroit will beat Jacksonville. Now, the next matchup in the AFC South matchup. The Tennessee Titans heading to Lucas Oil Stadium to play the Indianapolis Colts. Now, of course, Tennessee went off on the Packers. 45 points on the Packers. They blew him out from from start to go in that game. Mariota looked good. DeMarco Murray had a rushing touchdown. I mean, DeMar- uh, Mar- Mariota, like everybody's saying that, like, if Br- Brady and Mariota are like the top two quarterbacks. Like, if Tom Brady didn't get, if t- Tom Brady was still suspended, Mariota would have been leading in the MVP race. Of course, Tom Brady is is what do you call it? One of the greatest of all time. Mariota is going to be right up there. He needs a few more seasons. He's going to be a top quarterback. I watched him at Oregon. Fantastic quarterback. He's doing fantastic this season. This may be his best season. Then you have the Indianapolis Colts are coming off a bye. Of course, they're at home. And now this is the pick that if I pick them, if I pick against them, they're going to win. And if I pick for them, they're going to lose. And you know what? I'm gonna pick against them. I'm gonna pick the Tennessee Titans. I think they're I think they're maybe the best team in the South. No offense to Houston, no offense to Indy, but Tennessee is the up and coming team in the NFC in the AFC South. So I'm gonna take the Tennessee Titans to beat the Indianapolis Colts, hoping that luck goes on my side on that pick. Now the next matchup: the Tampa Bay Buccaneers heading two Arrowhead to play the Kansas City Chiefs. Now both of these teams are coming off wins. KC coming back from 17-3 down to beat the Carolina Panthers, and Tampa Bay beating kind of the worthless Chicago Bears. No offense, Chicago Bears. Tampa Bay looked good. Of course, they got Dougie Martin back. Uh, Muscle Hamster, of course, came back in that game. Came back this week, so that was good for them. Winston looked good, of course. Made a few mistakes, but what can you say? It's Tampa Bay. They always make mistakes. They have the Kansas City Chiefs. Of course, they did not have Jeremy Macklin in the game in that game on Sunday, but they got it done with their defense. Eric Berry, that run back to cut the lead, was amazing. What do you call it? Justin uh, defense showed up again, and that's what's so good about Kansas City is their defense. And of course, in the AFC West, every team is really good. Every team is really good in the AFC West. So in this matchup, and of course this is an Arrowhead, I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs. It's an Arrowhead. Hopefully Macklin will be back for this game. Um, for them, of course, Alex Smith did good. And they're an Arrowhead, and they're usually really good at Arrowheads. So I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now the next matchup, the Arizona Cardinals heading to Minnesota to play the Minnesota Vikings. Now... The Arizona Cardinals did beat the 49ers, of course, last second field goal, which shouldn't even be a thought that I thought they were going to just blow out the Niners because the Niners are terrible. And I'll get to the Niners in a and I'll get to the Niners in a minute. Uh uh what do you call it? And then um of course um 
course, uh, Fitzgerald had a fantastic game. He passed uh, Terrell Owens in the receiving yards. So congrats to Larry Fitzgerald. They looked good. David Johnson looked good. Everybody looked good in that game. Then you have the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this is one of the teams that made my fucking list of dangerously. Is that the Minnesota Vikings? How do you start 5-0? and You have Sam Bradford. You don't have Teddy Bridgewater. You don't have... You're 5-0. You lose four straight games. Four straight games. You lose first. You lose first place in your division to a team that was on a bye. No running game without Adrian Peterson. And Sam Bradford can't do it himself. He needs help. So, coming from me, I'm going to take the Arizona Cardinals to beat the Minnesota Vikings. Because I think Arizona's got a little bit more depth. J.J. Nelson for the Cardinals. John Brown. Uh, John Brown. Larry Fitzgerald. All that. David Johnson. All that in the defense. Hoping, hopefully, they'll, uh, well, this year, Tyron Matthews is going to be out for a couple weeks. So, cornerback position is going to be very limited. But, again, I am going to take the Arizona Cardinals to beat the Minnesota Vikings. Now the next matchup. Of course, my New England Patriots heading to Santa Clara to play the San Francisco 49ers. Now, of course, the New England Patriots did lose to the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday night football. They didn't look good. Of course, Deion Lewis came back, but he was very, he was inactive. Of course, I did not make the pick. The coin made the pick. And if you if you doubted my coin the coin in Seattle beating New England, shame, shame on you. Because that coin has been, has, was fair and unbiased. Of course, this is going to be a bounce back game because, of course, they lose to Seattle on Sunday Night Football. They lost the same, they lost the way Seattle lost at the Super Bowl. So it was kind of deja vu for the, deja vu for uh, Patriots fans that they, uh, that they they lost it on a goal line stand just like Seattle did super in the Super Bowl. So that was kind of deja vu. And then you have the 49ers who of course lost. They look terrible. They're one and eight. They're garbage. I mean I know there's a lot of the 49er fans in California. If I was you 49er fans just bury the season because this season's been garbage. And let me just say something about Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly you say you don't want to leave. Don't want to bolt for the uh, college football I'm gonna open the door for you. Go, go on, go on, Kelly. You know you do. You know you want to go. You don't want to stay with a one and eight team. Go on, go on, Kelly. Go to college. You're more successful there than you were here in the NFL. Go, Kelly. Go. No offense, Colin Kaepernick has looked good, so I can't say anything bad about Colin Kaepernick. He looked good in this matchup. Come on, this is even a question. I'm picking the New England Patriots to beat the San Francisco 49ers because it's an obvious. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the New England Patriots to beat the San Francisco 49ers in a blowout. Now the next matchup: the Chicago Bears heading to Gotham to play the New York Giants. Now, of course, the Chicago Bears did lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They look terrible. Their season is kind of over, so that's kind of an obvious. Of course, Jordan Howard did get hurt, the running back and Achilles injury. So if you have him. Well, you better hope it's not a big time. This is a huge Achilles injury, so you better hope he's not big time hurt. If you have, if if you have anything, for, if you have any players from the Bears, well, I feel sorry for you. I mean, they're terrible. Then you have the New York Giants, who of course beat the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday Night Football. Of course, they looked good. Offense looked better than they were a few weeks ago. So. In this matchup, I am going to go with the New York Giants because they're hot. Chicago's not. Chicago will never be hot except for their baseball teams or their basketball teams. So I'm going to take the New York Giants to beat the Chicago Bears. Now the next matchup. The Miami Dolphins heading to Los Angeles to play the L.A. Rams. Now, of course, the Miami Dolphins gave me a big-time win last night. At San Diego, I know a lot of people pick San Diego to win that game. I picked Miami. What did they do? They win. Jay Ajayi did good. Tannehill looked good. Stills looked good. Everybody looked good. Defense looked up. And let me just say this. Kiko Alonso won that game. I trashed him in week three for hurting Jimmy Garoppolo. And he was the sole cause of me winning with the Dolphins this week. So, Kiko Alonso, okay, we're even. You, you're, We're even. We're definitely even. You 
you helped me win a game yet, and you helped me win a game this week, so I gotta give thanks to Kiko Alonso for that interception return back. Now, of course, that they're this is another East Coast team playing on the West Coast. Miami did play at San Diego, so they're gonna stay in Los. They're gonna stay in that area because they have to play the LA Rams, who did beat the New York Jets. No touchdowns. It was field goals. It's a field goal. Put you to sleep game against the New York Jets. This is the what? The uh, defense again stood, stood, stepped up for the Rams. The Rams defense is ridiculous. I have said this since week, a few weeks, uh, for weeks, that the Rams defense is really good this season. Now, of course, this is Todd Gurley out of Georgia. Todd Gurley, the third, playing against Jay Jai from Boise State. So this is going to be another good running back matchup, just like what it was with jo- uh, Marv, uh, with um, Melvin Gordon and Jay Ajayi. So this is another great running back matchup. In this matchup, I am going to take the Miami Dolphins to sweep the West Coast. Sweeps, uh, they beat San Diego last week. They'll beat L.A. this week. So I'm taking the Dolphins to beat the Rams. Now the next matchup in the battle of the Birds again. The Philadelphia Eagles heading to Central Link Field to play the Seattle Seahawks. Now, of course, the Philadelphia Eagles did beat the Atlanta, the Atlanta Falcons. Wentz looked good. Wentz looked good. Can't say anything bad about them. They did work. They beat. They they kept the Falcons under 20. They were at 15. And Falcon fans, top-rated scoring offense. You score 15. Like really. The only thing I gotta say about um. The only thing I gotta say about it with the Eagles, kicker for the Eagles. Please wake the fuck up. Don't be make don't be missing those field goals. Of course Ryan Matthews looked good. Wentz looked good, so they're back in the they're back in the winning pace. Then you have the Seattle Seahawks who did upset the New England Patriots. Hey, like I said in the Patriots game, the coin predicted the Seahawks were gonna win that game. The coin was right. If anybody doubted that coin that I flipped last week against between my two teams. What's wrong with you? That coin has been right every time I flipped it. So, if anybody doubted the coin, anybody who doubted that's uh, anybody who doubted the flip and the coin, shame, shame on you. Now, of course, Seattle looked good. They they they're back on the winning track. Of course, they're in first place. The, this is the Battle of the Birds, the Seahawks and the Eagles. We had one with the Eagles and the Falcons, so this is the second Battle of the Birds. In this matchup, I am going to take the my Seattle Seahawks because they look good. Cam Chancellor is back. Of course, Michael Ben did not play. Thomas Rawls is still hurt, so they look good. That's one thing. They're, they're re- uh, Pete Carroll definitely needed that win on Sunday Night Football because the last time they played each other that infamous not running the ball and trying to not running the ball at the goal line was a big time demon to get past and of course he got past it on Sunday night football so they're on the winning path and of course you gotta look out for the Philadelphia defense so Wilson, Russell Wilson do work as usual so I'm gonna take the Seattle Seahawks to beat the Philadelphia Eagles now the Sunday night football matchup. The Green Bay Packers heading to D.C. to play the Washington Redskins. Now, if you thought the Minnesota Vikings was the only team that was going to get on the list, Green Bay Packers, you just made my list for what happened in that game against Tennessee. How? How the hell do you give up 44 points to the Titans? They were down. They were down in that game. They were down at halftime 35-17. To the Tennessee Titans. No offense to the Titans, but come on, Packer fans, really? Cheeseheads was like Aaron Rodgers says the relaxing Green Bay. It's panic, fucking panic in Madison for you Cheeseheads Packers fans. Rodgers three picks. They can have 371 yards passing, three picks. If their bread and butter is rushing and they have no running game, even though they had James Starks back in the lineup, they need help. And I was listening on game day morning that they're going to be the team that's going to bounce back. They can't even beat the Titans. They're not bouncing back. So Green Bay, uh, Green Bay, the whole Green Bay Packers team, 
you just made my list of dangerously for being stupid idiots. And of course, two teams in the North made my list this week. That would be the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. Stupid idiots. And now you have the Washington Redskins who did beat the Minnesota Vikings. So they looked good. Of course, Deshaun Jackson did not play, and he may not be playing this game either. In this matchup, I am going to take the Washington Redskins. They're at home. Should be a big-time game for them. Kurt Cousins looked good. Like, the whole, ooh-wee, Kurt Cousins doing work. Definitely, I am going to take the Washington Redskins over the Green Bay Packers. Now, the Monday night matchup that goes against, of course, the night after. The, the night after Survivor Series, the Monday Night Raw after. The Houston Texans heading to the black hole to play the Oakland Raiders. Now, of course, the Oakland Raiders are coming off a bye. They're at home, rested. You got Houston on the road, who who are undefeated on the road away from Houston. So this should be a definitely a good matchup. But, of course, I'm going to take the Oakland Raiders. The Oakland Raiders are the team in the West. So, of course, I know a lot of Raider fans... Here in California, you're going to be happy that I'm picking the Raiders again. So I'm taking the Raiders over the Houston Texans. And those are my Week 11 NFL predictions. And I hope you enjoyed my predictions. Comment below, who do you have winning this week? Comments pop was popping last week. Few, a few Cowboy fans, again, a lot of great football fans on my comments. So I really do appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe and become part of this Dangerous Alliance. And I will see you in the next video. See ya!